right. So if you have read and understood, considering the critical care scenario, kindly tell me how do you uh, plan to manage this patient? I'll manage this patient according to the CRIPS uh, protocol. Yes. I will, I will uh, do an immediate assessment, uh, which I'll follow the ABCD of, uh, of uh, resuscitation and uh, concomitantly. And if he, he, I'll ensure that I will speak with the patient. If the patient communicates with me, that means that the airway is uh, patent. I can see here that the saturation of the patient is at 92%. And this patient, I will admit uh, oxygen, 100% uh, oxygen, uh, 15 to 20 uh, liters per minute. Uh, of humidified uh, oxygen with a uh, with a face mask. I will breathe in. I will check if the patient is breathing uh, uh, spontaneously. I will also I will look. I will feel, and I will uh, treat appropriately. In the circulation, I will secure intravenous access with a wide bore cannula, sixteen G, and I will measure the pulse, uh, the blood pressure of the patient, and I will also check the the level of the J J JVP of this patient. I will put a uh, urethral catheter to monitor the urine output of this patient because the patient is in hypovolemic shock to achieve at least 0.5 mils to 1 mil per kg per hour of urine, urine output. I will also assess the urinary joint cast status of the, of the patient using the AV, AV, AVP, AV uh, MP approach. And uh, also I will expose the patient, minding, uh, taking care of uh, preventing hypothermia in the, in the patient and doing a holistic approach in the management of the patient. After this, I will review the charts of the patients and then do a thorough uh, systemic uh, examination and I will uh, evaluates uh, the, the patient uh, appropriately. In evaluating the patient, I will, will want to do an arterial blood gases for analysis. I would take samples for some bloods, uh, full blood counts, uh, electrolyte urea and creatinine, uh, liver function tests of this of this patient. And uh, this patient that has had, that has undergone a high spinal patient, is still on epidural uh, catheter that is activated. I will stop, I will stop all medications through the epidural catheter because I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'm thinking that it could be a high epidural uh, anesthesia that the patient uh, has had. Okay, uh, how would you know if the epidural catheter was placed higher? How would you confirm this? I will check the spine of the patient. Yes. I'll, I'll check the spine of the patient and see if the epidural catheter is still inside you and if it is connected to, to any, any syringe and the deactivator. All right. Okay. Which can you? That the patient yes. must have had a neural and anesthesia, anesthesia rather. So. Yes. Good. Can you tell me what are the advantages? Uh, why we should or why epidural catheter was preferred in this patient? What are the advantages of uh, giving epidural block? Yeah. In 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 this patient, it, it gives an advantage of uh, reducing the metabolic response to trauma. Intraoperative okay. and postoperative. Okay. They can also uh, afford one the opportunity of uh, giving postoperative analgesia through the epidural uh, catheter. Okay. Can you name a few other sites which are used for other procedures, other surgeries for uh, giving the epidural block? I can be given at uh, T45. Yes. And uh, T3, T4. For which surgeries? Can you also mention, please? Okay, it can be used for general pelvic procedures, yes. adrenal procedures, uh, prostatectomy, uh, urethroplasty, uh, operation on the on the bladder, on the also also for appendectomy could also be used. All right, all right, okay, uh, and for abdomen T four and T six for intestinal and gynecological procedures and all right, okay. Yes, ma thank you, ma'am. Uh, can you tell me? what the level of the block depends on. There are the three factors that you have to keep in your mind. Can you name those three, please? Yeah, the level of the block depends on the uh, uh, patients and the, the medication factors. The patient factors, it depends on the, on the age, the, the body habitus of the patients, the position of the patients, if it's supine or sitting in, in position, the body mass index of the patient. It all depends on the medication factors, the type of drug, uh, given the dose and, and the, the procedure as well, it depends on the yes, procedure and the, and the, and the, for how long. Well. Yes, yes ma'am. The composition of the drug, if it's mixed with a vasoconstrictor agent, which could prolong its action. Okay, can you please tell me in this scenario, patient is hypotensive and bradycardic. Can you please tell me why? 
Yes, my dear. Hypotension could be as a result of a distributive shock, which okay. may be of, because of the intense the vessel di the dilatation that could result from uh, this epidural uh, analgesia. It's also possible that the patient may also have bled significantly, and the patient may also have a hypovolemic shock, which may be a cause of uh, hypotension. But the patient has bradycardia, which is typical of uh, uh, this, uh, this type of shock. Okay. In, in Can you please name few factors which affect the efficacy of the epidural block? The efficacy of epidural block uh, is affected by the, the medication factors, which the dose, the dose affected, if it is also premixed with another medication, also affected, it makes it act, uh, act longer. The patient factors, the age of the patient, the weight of the patient, the height of the patient, and also the position of the patient. Okay. Can you please tell me how would you differentiate between the high epidural block and hypovolemic shock? Yes, ma'am. In high epidural block, the patient will have a hypotension. Patient will be high, patient will, however, the patient will have a, a, a warm, a warm, uh, extremities and the pulse may be may be pounding, but in, in hypovolemic shock, patient will be hypotensive and patient will be tachycardic as opposed to bradycardia, which will which will find in a epidural block. And the, for hypovolemic shock, the extremities will be cold and calming. All right, good. Uh, while giving epidural block, why is it important to check for temperature sensation rather than for the pain or the degree of pain? Yeah, it's important because uh, once uh, it patient is uh, anesthetized, uh, the patient may not uh, feel pain and the, the pain sensation will inflict unnecessary injuries. The patient could bleed. The patient could also have infection from the sites of a pain, of, a, of the prick. Plus uh, the temperature fiber, uh, fibers, they are conducted faster than the pain fibers. Okay, can you please tell me the systemic effects of epidural uh, blocks or the epidural analgesia? How it affects? Please. Yes. Sorry, I didn't get the question, ma'am. Yes, can you tell me the systemic effects of epidural analgesia? Yeah, the, the, the systemic effects are multi-systemic in the cardiovascular system. It, it causes uh, hypotension and uh, it, it causes uh, bradycardia and yes. uh, it causes vasodilatation in the cardiovascular yes. system. In the respiratory system, it uh, 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 increases oxygen. In the, also in the cardiovascular system, it increases oxygen utilization. In the respiratory system, it uh, re reduces uh, lung compliance and it uh, helps in lung expansion. It helps in the lung expansion. In the musculoskeletal system, it uh, causes a muscle relaxation and uh, increase the utilization of uh, uh, blood by the, by the, by the muscle. Then the, in, the, in, the, in the nervous system, it causes, uh, it causes, it causes okay. anesthesia. Can you, uh, are you able to tell me or are you able to explain it to me how epidural block reduces the risk of uh, DVT, deep vein thrombosis in the patient postoperatively? Yes, it does by by uh, it does by increasing reducing the metabolic response to, to trauma. Oh, a patient is able patient is able to to breathe better. And uh, by this, the by this the, the action is, is activated, then the, uh, there will be an increase in the venous return, which will eliminate this significant risk factor for for deep vein thrombosis. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, increases the circulation. Absolutely good. And since you are giving IV fluid as well, and you can maintain so. That is also amazing. And maintain the pressure at the same time. So good. Started. Yes. Very good. 